Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today we are taking a look at what can really only be best described as an absolutely absurd product that makes no sense if you look at it from a value perspective, at least the kind of value that we normally talk about, you know, cost per frame, that sort of stuff. The value on offer here is more, I don't know, what would you say, luxury goods type value. Look, it's certainly a unique and impressive product, but it's not going to be for everyone. The product in question is the ASUS ROG Matrix Platinum GeForce RTX 4090. And we got our first glimpse of this thing back in May of this year at the Computex trade show in Taipei. Back then we did get some shots of the display model, but we didn't end up covering it as we weren't really sure if it was actually going to come to market. And I'll just be honest, we pretty much ran out of time, probably a bit too much drinking towards the end of the show. Anyway, we now have the ROG Matrix, so let's take a closer look at it. Now, the card is fairly compact as it is liquid cooled, so the bulk of the cooling is moved off the card as heat is dissipated via a 360mm radiator. That also means there's no fans on the 278mm long card, but there is a lot of metal and that sees it weigh in at a rather surprising 2,149 grams. Still, while it is relatively compact at 278mm long, at least for an RTX 4090, it does stand around 147mm tall from the PCIe connector to the top of the card, and it's also 48mm wide, so it will take up three slots. They call it two and a half slots, but you know, you can't take up half a slot, so basically consider this to be a three slot design. Then there's the 360mm radiator. So if you already have an AIO cooling your CPU, for example, you will need room for a second large radiator in your case. Bit of a high class problem there. In terms of dimensions for the radiator, you're looking at 400mm long, 120mm wide, and 65mm thick. And not that it really matters, but it weighed in at 1440 grams. So all up, you're looking at adding about 3.6 kilograms to your build with this graphics card. Hopefully you don't move it too often. Now, as for the design, this is obviously highly subjective and opinions will vary wildly as they often do, but I think the ROG Matrix looks pretty amazing. I love the sort of industrial design that ASUS has gone with here, and I think it'll suit almost all builds really well. It's a mostly metal design, so it feels very sturdy and very premium, and the embedded RGB lighting provides some really nice effects. The liquid cooling tubes feed in from the rear of the card, which worked well for our setup, and the black sleeving used to wrap them looks really good. But I'm more impressed with how practical this design is. In the past, we've checked out a few liquid cooled graphics cards, and many of them have been a complete mess when it comes to cable management. Thankfully though, that's not an issue here, and in fact, there's almost no cables to speak of. Simply connect the single 12 volt high power cable and you're good to go. It's that easy. And that means that the AIO pump and three 120 millimeter fans are all powered through that power connector, and ASUS has hidden the power and RGB wires to the fans in the sleeving around the tubes. The fans are then daisy chained together, so there's no cable mess there either. It's a very impressive setup. Now back over on the card, you'll find a dual bar switch that allows you to select between the performance and quiet modes. And then at the IO panel, there's three display port outputs and two HDMI outputs. So that's an impressive range of display outputs there. Now pulling the ROG matrix apart is a fairly in-depth process. There's a lot of screws. I don't recommend that you do this as it's a very well put together and good design overall, but there's a lot of screws and just a lot of bits and bobs that you have to mess around with. But once down to the bare PCB, we find the GPU die is covered in liquid metal and surrounding it is a UV resin, which seals the metal frame on the GPU package to the copper block. And that protects the package components while also stopping the liquid metal from potentially leaking out when vertically mounted. As for the PCB itself, it packs 14 layers and measures 220 millimeters long by 145 millimeters tall, and it is littered with power stages. In total, there are 24 70 amp MPS power stages just for the GPU, configured as a 12 phase design, with another four powering the GDDR6X memory. Then we have the copper base plate, which covers the GPU, memory, and VRM components. And as mentioned, for contacting the GPU, liquid metal is used, but for the memory and power components, more traditional thermal pads have been used there. 
The back plate also features some thermal pads, which help to extract any heat that would otherwise end up trapped behind the back plate. So that's a quick look over the ROG matrix inside and out. Now it's time to see how it performs. Okay, so here's how the matrix performs when installed inside an ATX case with the doors closed after an hour with an ambient room temperature of 21 degrees. The GPU die hit a peak hotspot temperature of just 58 degrees with a peak junction temperature of 51 degrees and the memory peaked at 74 degrees. Now for reference, the ASUS Tough Gaming model, which performs really well I might add for an air-cooled model, that managed a peak hotspot temperature of 77 degrees under the same test conditions with a peak memory temperature of 76 degrees. So we're looking at almost a 20 degree reduction in GPU temperature for the matrix, but just a two degree reduction for the memory. It's also worth noting that the Tough Gaming typically clocked at 2760 megahertz, whereas the matrix ran at a stable 2880 megahertz, and that's a 4% increase. I should also note that the 120 millimeter fans were spinning at just 1100 RPM, and at that speed, they were no louder than our case fans, so the GPU couldn't be heard over our test system. Now, this is going to be, I suspect, quite disappointing for many of you, the manual overclock. Firstly, ASUS gave us no indication of what to expect here. They actually provided us with no real information about the product at all until the very last minute. They really just sent me the sample and sort of said, have fun with it. So it's unclear if I'm holding it wrong, but I was able to get a stable 3060 megahertz out of it. So another 6%, which given past experiences of overclocking RTX 4090s, that seems decent, but also pretty underwhelming for what the matrix is. Now the GPU hotspot temperature, that did only increase by a few degrees to 59 degrees, and the memory temperatures remain much the same. The fan speed did increase though, but only by 100 RPM. So it is very cool and quiet when overclocked but the gains also won't be all that significant and we'll take a look at that now. Testing with Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart saw the ROG Matrix deliver 6% more performance than the found position and at this time our manual overclock boosted the frame rates by a further 6% to 121 FPS, though that was only a 2.5% increase over the overclocked Strix model. Starfield has more of the same for us really, again the ROG Matrix was 6% faster than the FE model, though this time our manual overclock only resulted in a 3% increase to 73 FPS, which is what we extracted from the overclocked Strix model. And last up we have Star Wars Jedi Survivor, and again the ROG Matrix, it offered a 6% boost from the FE model, and then our manual overclock was good for just 4 more FPS, so in this instance that was a 4.5% increase. So the ROG Matrix did deliver the best results we've seen from an RTX 4090 yet, but only by a whisker. Now, as I was wrapping up my testing, I thought it might be interesting to wipe away the liquid metal and apply a few different compounds to see how that affects the operating temperatures. Now, if you recall earlier, stock using the liquid metal, we saw a peak hotspot temperature of 58 degrees. And now, using Thermal Grizzly's Hydronaut, that temperature has increased to 67 degrees. That's a 9 degree increase, which is surprisingly low, though the overall temperature is about what you'd probably expect from an AIO cooler on an RTX 4090. Then, I went through the pain of disassembling the ROG Matrix once again, and this time installed Thermal Grizzly's Cryo Sheet. And this saw a peak hotspot temperature of just 60 degrees, so 2 degrees hotter than the factory installed liquid metal, which I thought was really impressive. The cryo sheet is arguably a much better solution as it will never dry out and it certainly won't leak. So it's a long life, no maintenance solution with great performance. I've been keen to play around with cryo sheets on GPUs, but I haven't had time and I'm glad we got to try this experiment here and I'm keen to do a lot more of this testing in the near future. Now, a quick word about the software. Initially, I had overclocked the ROG Matrix using MSI's Afterburner, as I didn't have the latest version of the ASUS GPU Tweak 3 tool. And like I said, ASUS didn't get me much information about this card until the last minute. But before wrapping this review up, they did provide a private download link to the latest version. So I gave it a whirl. In terms of overclocking options and results, it is very similar to Afterburner and I wasn't able to extract any additional performance. But there are some really cool features on offer here. The 12 volt power connector readout is awesome and it lets you know if there are any pins that aren't making contact properly or any pins that are delivering too much power. 
and the various visualized temperature readouts are also a really nice touch. It's a neat software package that works well, so a great inclusion here, and I'm sure you'll be able to download this version shortly. So there you have it. The ASUS ROG Matrix Platinum GeForce RTX 4090. I think it's fair to say that this thing's a little bit more special than your typical flagship extreme graphics card. I mean, it has liquid metal on the GPU. It's got a massive 360 millimeter radiator. And I think you'll agree that the hollow metal frame design looks very cool. From the moment you set eyes on the box that comes in to the moment you install it, and fire it up for the first time, it's all very special. Like all flagship extreme graphics cards, that's sort of where the excitement ends for most. Because once it's plugged in and fired up, the performance really isn't that different to basically any other RTX 4090. Sure, NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 4090 is a beast of a GPU in its own right, so the ROG Matrix is certainly very fast, but sitting next to a bog stock base model 4090 it's not that special, at least not nearly as special as it looks. And look, sure, you can overclock it. I got a smidgen more out of mine without compromising stability, but my bin silicon was only marginally faster than basically every other RTX 4090 that I've overclocked to date. Still, the ROG Matrix was very cool and quiet, as you'd expect from a card with a 360mm AIO and liquid metal on it, so it does have that going for it. That said, if that's what you're after, you could buy a base model RTX 4090 and strap a block on it for a heck of a lot less, and you could also use Thermal Grizzly's Crow Sheet for that near liquid metal performance without all the messing around. But of course, that's not really the point. The ROG Matrix is for those that have cash to burn and want to get something that's arguably a bit special in return. And speaking of cash to burn, I'm... I'm not really sure how to tell you this. I guess I'll just tell you and I'll do my best to keep a straight face while I'll do it, or while I, while I do it. I'll see I'm already messing it up. The ASUS ROG Matrix Platinum GeForce RTX 4090, it costs $4,000 US for one RTX 4090. $4,000 US. So yeah. Anyway, if you enjoyed this review, whatever, whatever, if you enjoyed this content, uh, give it a like. Subscribe for probably what will be future content that'll be much more, will be covering much more practical products, I, I would think. Uh, but yeah, do that subscribe thing. We also have Float Plane Patreon if you want to get more Harbour Unbox goodness access to our exclusive Discord server, monthly live streams to myself, behind the scenes content Q&A. It's a lot of cool stuff there, so check that out if you're interested. But if not, perfectly fine. Won't hold it against you. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve. See you next time.